back to the Pim and Pam podcast. My name is Megan Nodecker and I'm a knitwear designer from Abbotsford, British Columbia, Canada. You can find me on Instagram as Pim and Pin and on Ravelry as Knit Pim and Pin um, and in our Ravelry group, which is also called Pim and Pin. Today is the 29th of November. This is episode 42 um, and it's starting to feel like winter now, <laughs> a little bit, <laughs> kind of. We've had some like really exceptionally warm, weird weather um, lately for BC anyways. And um, this week, finally, it's it's very clear and sunny outside, but it is definitely much colder than it has been all year. So um, definitely excited to break out some more of my knits. <laughs> Um, I just want to say I really I'm, I'm really happy that some of you commented and said how much you enjoyed seeing Georgia on the podcast. Um, I'm always kind of a little weird about that, not because I'm weird about her being on the podcast, but I don't really want to put anyone off by having my five-year-old on. <laughs> but um, I do really appreciate that some of you commented and said that you liked it, and I'm sorry if you didn't, but you can always skip through. I mean, she's never in them for very long, so um, yeah, maybe next Pro D Day we'll uh, <laughs> have another guest. So for some um, for some knit along things and stuff that's going on right now, we have. Um, quite a few things going on actually. Um, there is the Rainforest Knit Along, which is um, being run through our Ravelry group. And that is a knit along for any of the patterns from our Rainforest Knit Books or Mema or Cat Bells. Um, and that was going to end on December 31st, but I forgot about Christmas knitting. And I know a lot of people pretty much just spend December knitting Christmas stuff. Um, so some of the participants had expressed that and um, I have extended the deadline. So I've extended it by a couple weeks. It's now ending on January 20th. So if, if you were kind of on the fence about joining or if you started something already because whips are allowed um, and got sidetracked by Christmas or whatever, you can always pick back up in January and um, and still join along. So we have a chat thread on Ravelry and a finished objects thread on Ravelry and we have some great prizes for that. Um, I haven't added it to Ravelry yet, but I know one is um, the rain or the forest edition of um, the making magazine and that was donated by 88 Stitches and then um, a couple of skeins of beautiful yarn from Sassy, um, Sassy Strings. Um, we also have the wintertime mini along, um, and that one is basically a, it's a mini along. Um, you get two entries in the finished objects thread if you use, um, the sprocket sock pattern, which is my newest, um, sock pattern release. So if you use that pattern, you get two entries, any other pattern you can think of, you can use, um, and you can put that in the finished objects thread for, for one, um, one entry. That one is going on until February 14th. Both of those you can find the links to um, in the description box below and they're both being run on through Ravelry. And oh, the giveaway winner from two episodes ago, Tracy uh, Kuzniak. Uh, you haven't gotten a hold of me yet, so um, please send me your info so I can get that prize sent out to you. And then um, last but certainly not least is the Indie Design Gift Along. Um, that started last Tuesday and it's very exciting. It's my favorite, probably my favorite event of the year. It's just so big and so fun and I like, I'm a participating designer and basically what it is is we have over 250 designers that are participating and it is a big giant knit along. Um, any um, any paid pattern, so anything that's not for free from any of the designers that are participating, you can enter um, to win, like there's like hundreds of prizes. <laughs> um, so there's eight different categories. You can knit whatever pattern you want from the participating designers and, um, and enter to win some of those prizes. And there's also a sale um, and the sale is gonna end on December 2nd and um, all of the participating designers have between 10 and 20 of their patterns for sale. Um, 
I have 20 patterns for sale. I will put a link, I'll put a link to everything in the description box. I'll put a link to the Ravelry group and the, um, and my sale bundle and the code and everything. So yeah, you just use um, the code gift along 2019 and that will get you 25% off 20 of my patterns and literally like hundreds of other patterns. So <laughs> I'll make sure to put links down to all that below. And it's just really fun. Um, I think the knit along goes until December 31st. It is a gift along. So it's, it is more geared towards gift knitting, but you certainly don't have to knit gifts. I, I always kind of use this as an opportunity to knit things for myself or <laughs> knit things from other designers, um, which is, which is always fun. Um, I did cast on something last night, but I'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> what I'm wearing today is again, my ironwood hat. This has pretty much been living on my head since I put the pom-pom on it. <laughs> I always kind of just put it on in the morning so I don't have to do my hair and then I just leave it on all day. <laughs> um, it is made with sweet fiber, um, cashmerino worsted, I think. And this is the Sequoia colorway. Um, and it is a pattern by, my, by me, I designed it. Uh, it's one of the ones that is on sale as well, so like I said before, with the um, gift along, this pattern is included. Um, also sprocket socks, if you're looking to do some socks. Oh, lots of my sweaters, all my new stuff is, and then some um, little things as well. Just go get it. <laughs> okay, so hmm, I have some finished stuff, but I'm not. Maybe I'll show you what I am happy with first. <laughs> so I, I did finally finish these guys. Um, these are my blueberry waffle socks. I didn't really use the pattern, but I've done it so many times before that I kind of just know it. I just use the stitch pattern. And this is using Katya yarn in the box. Um, I don't know the colorway name, but it's a very cool kind of gradient stripey thing going on. <laughs> um, these are not for me, they're gonna be for a gift. But one thing that I didn't notice until, literally until I was like almost done the second one. Let's see if you can see. Maybe. But see this kind of medium red that's going through these ones here, all along this bottom? Well, one is very much red. And one is very much orange. <laughs> I don't think you can tell unless you're really looking at it. Um, and it, it looks okay in this light right now, but last night when I was working on them, there was like a big difference. One was red and one was orange. Um, and these were sold together as a set of matching, you know, 50 gram skeins to make a pair of socks. So I just thought it was kind of funny that, that they were different colors. <laughs> Not anything to be like mad at, but I was just like, really guys? <laughs> so those are, those are my socks that are finished. They will be blocked and gifted away and um, entered into the Grocery Girl Sock Bash. Um, my next one is this, they are finished, but I might change something. So these are my underwing mitts. These are the color work mittens I've been working on. Um, this pattern is by Erica Hauser and I'm using Lamana Como in I think color 11 and seven or something like that. I don't know. This one's kind of like an olive green. Um, it looks olive green in the natural light and then at my house it looks brown. Um, and then just an ice cream. This is also Lumana Como. This is the duplicate stitching that you do at the end. And in the pattern, it's this really lovely, like bright orange kind of. Um, but I didn't really have anything. I don't know. I just thought the blue would look nice. The blue did look really nice when the yarn looks brown. <laughs> now that it's green, I mean, I like in the in the light that it's green. I still like it, but I might change it. I mean, it's just a couple, it'll take me 15 minutes. I should really do it. Um, but I think I'm going to change it to a red 
um, just so that it stands out a bit more and kind of goes with that goes with that green a bit. I love this pattern so much. <laughs> I love this yarn so much. I love this pattern so much. Uh, I'm very, very excited about these guys. And I think I'll be even more excited when this is red. Um, I wore them when I walked Georgia to school the other day and they're so lovely and soft and, and like, and warm. Um, they're so nice. I did buy some more of this last time I was at 88 stitches. So I think I'm going to make um, myself a pair of full mittens with it. Cause I only had one ball of each and I just about ran out of the green, um, by the time I was done. So it was a good thing I didn't try full length mittens cause I wouldn't have had enough. Um, I didn't alter, I did alter the pattern a little bit. <laughs> uh, the only thing I did was this part here, the ribbing was down lower and I just, Felt like I finished one of them as it was written and I just felt it was a little too short. It came to about here so you could like see some of my palm. I don't know if that's just because I have long hands or if it's just the pattern was a little too short. So all I did was added a couple rows of the green and then another solid row of the white and then I started the ribbing and I think I did a couple extra rows of the ribbing as well. Aside from that I did it to pattern and it's lovely. Um, one thing I really appreciate is on the front, like the, the palm and the back of the hand, the motifs are different sizes. So like this is, this part is smaller than this part. So you don't get, like if they were the same, you would have this kind of border stripe over here. But then when you wear them, it would kind of be like on the top of your hand. I just I thought that was very thoughtful and um, in a really nice detail to a really great pattern. Um, I know many, many people have knit these. If you haven't, I highly suggest it. Um, this was my first time really doing color work, um, like a full color work project. And it was great. Um, I learned how to do with both my hands and I finally figured out how to catch my floats properly. <laughs> so it's great. Um, really, really love those um now on to the little bit disappointing project <laughs> which is it's totally my own fault but it doesn't make that any better um i did finish the wrap i was working on so this is a big giant wrap using fiddly dye works um Superwash Merino Worsted in the Harper colorway, which is this beautiful, beautiful kind of taupey, orangey, blacky kind of color. Um, and I love it. I really, really love it. I love the way that it turned out. I like how drapey it is. Um, I blocked the bejesus out of it. <laughs> like when I block shawls, I, I put my blocking wires in and then I like pull them as far as they will go. Um, the majority of the time because I wanted this to pull out and, and be drapey. The thing that I am really disappointed in myself about is I overcompensated with my edging and because I didn't want to do it too tight, I did it way too loose and I don't think there's a way to fix it. <laughs> like I, as I was knitting it, I felt like it was kind of loose and I was like, oh, maybe I should block it before I do anything else. And I didn't, and that was a mistake. <laughs> um, so if I like wear it or it just like, it just doesn't fall right and it rolls and it's kind of like, I don't, I don't know if you can tell so much, but I certainly can. And it's kind of just here, maybe if I hold it like this, you'll be able to see it. See how floppy that edge is? Like that's just supposed to be crisp and lovely. Um, so I thought of a different couple different things to do that I could maybe fix it. First thing I was gonna was trying, I'm kind of halfway in, is I folded that garter border back and did some back stitching. And that's not helping very much. <laughs> it's just kind of making a weird 
thing, other thing happen. Um, I was thinking maybe I could like take out some of the border and re-knit it or something. I don't think so. I, I think I'm gonna, I, right now I'm at the point where I might just take it all apart and redo it. <laughs> Not exactly the same either. Um, I think if I'm going to do it again, I mean, I'm not going to leave it like this. I can't. I just, my heart won't let me. Especially when it's a sample. I don't know. Maybe if it was something for myself, it would be different. But I'm making this pattern to sell to other people and I take pride in that. <laughs> so I don't, I can't, I can't live with this. Um, there are many things that I can, many things that I will fudge. This isn't one of them. And this isn't something that I can just like fix. Um, I was also maybe thinking of doing like an eye cord border, like an applied edging. Um, and I don't have enough yarn for that. And I don't think it's going to look good anyways. So I think I'm just going to re-knit it. <laughs> Not right now because I'm quite sad about it. I had a lot of fun knitting it. The yarn is so beautiful to work with, um, but it just isn't quite right. So every once in a while, I have to learn this lesson <laughs> that if I feel like I should block something midway through, I should just block something midway through. <laughs> um, yeah. So I'm going to set that aside for December because I'm, I was so excited. I was going to filmed this yesterday and I was so excited to like take it off the blocking mats and have this new thing and weave in the ends and then podcast about it and I was really stoked and then I took it off the mats and I was just like no <laughs> and then I wasn't excited about podcasting anymore so I didn't um <laughs> now that it sat for a day um I think I've just I mean unless anyone has any suggestions please give me some suggestions about how you can fix that floppy floppy edge. Um, keeping in mind that I don't have pretty much any yarn left. I might have 20 grams or something. <laughs> I'm really okay with redoing it. It was a nice project to do, but it does kind of suck having to do it again. What I might do too, if I do re -knit it is like, Cause I really don't like how it rolls too. So I might, I think this, this part can, can kind of take being with garter. Um, so what I might do is move this motif over a little bit. So just kind of move it so that it's more two thirds to, to the center instead of way off to the side. And then I just might turn some of this, not all of it, but maybe do like, starting from there on either side and then do the rest in garter. Um, that's kind of what I'm thinking. These things happen. <laughs> it's really, it happens all the time. <laughs> I was at a trunk show actually on Saturday, on Saturday, yeah, at Valley Yarns, which was really fun. Um, but I was working on these socks that I just finished and I was turning the heel and I had messed something up because I was chatting and wandering around and looking at stuff. So I messed something up. And so I was thinking back <laughs> and I think about three people commented that, it, you know, see, like everyone has to think back every once in a while. It's like, yes, I knit every day. Like the knitting is my job and I still mess things up all the time. <laughs> you just have to rip it back and try again. Um, that's a great thing about knitting, I think, is there's, you know, this, this project is disappointing to me. And like, I, I put a lot of hours into it, but it's not like anything got wasted. So I can take an hour, rip it all out, and then re-knit it. Um, so none of the, you know, sure, I, I lost all that time that I spent doing it. Um, but that was also learning time, right? So there you go. <laughs> 
<laughs> so those are my finished things. I'm gonna set this aside probably until January. I'll look at it again, um, again then. Um, yeah, so that's it for finished things. For works in progress, I'm still working on Justin's sweater. I have finished the sleeves and the body and everything. Um, so all I'm doing right now is working on the cuffs and the, the button bound and the collar and the hem. Um, it did take some figuring. I had a very frustrating couple of days <laughs> this week with knitting. <laughs> because he was very, he had this very specific thing in mind and we did figure it out. Um, and I'm, I haven't blocked this yet, but I'm gonna block this before I, before I start doing any of the other bits. Um, so I've just kind of used some, did some corrugated ribbing with some white and some gray. Um, and it took some fan dangling to, to get it right. Um, I think I had to rip it out about three times and he, he kept feeling really bad. He's like, no, no, it's okay. I'm like, no, like I'd rather just rip it out. And you know, that's why I wanted to practice on the cuff cause it's small. Like it'll take me 20 minutes to, to rip it out and redo it. And I'd rather have it right, like get it right and rip it out three times, then finish both the cuffs and like finish everything. And then, and then you're not liking it. So yeah, he, he, he felt bad for me having to rip it out. And I was like, no, no, no. Like it's all part of the process. <laughs> so we figured out the kind of cuff that he wanted. Um, I'm going to give this a block because it's flaring a little bit, but he also needs it to be very stretchy and the corrugated ribbing isn't super stretchy, but the bind off is. And anyways, it was a whole thing. So I'm just going to block it and see what happens because I don't want it to flare too, too much, but we'll see. Um, yeah, so after <laughs> working on Justin's cuff and disappointing, you know, shawl and needing to change the colors on, on my mittens, um, I decided I just needed to cast something on to make myself feel better. So I did. And I talked about this last time and I did cast on my Christmas cracker by Faye Kennington. Um, she is also a participating designer in the Indie Design Gift Along. Uh, so if you go to her, I don't think this is one of her sale patterns, but um, I don't care. I really liked it. <laughs> so yeah, this is the very, very humble beginnings of my Christmas cracker hat. <laughs> um, I'm using Hypothesis yarns in I'll show you the colors. You obviously can't really see. In these colors. So this is Royal, Zizu, can't remember what the yellow is called, and Wildcat. And the hat is, um, it's a color work hat. It has some snowflakes and some Christmassy stripey things on it. Um, I feel like I am going to alter it just a little bit and make it a little less slouchy because um, it seems very, very big um, <laughs> and very long. So I think I'm just gonna take out some of the motifs. Um, one of them, sadly, because it's kind of my favorite one, but I think I'm gonna take out the, there are these little um, like mistletoe things, but I'm not using green. I'm using the yellow instead of the green, so I mean, it won't really be mistletoe -y anyways, so I think I'm going to take that out and I might take one more section out, but, but yeah, so I'm very excited to start something new <laughs> and I have another project planned. Like I, I caked up lots of yarn to start new things. <laughs> so I'm going to start um, another hat using this, which is uh, Red Fox Fibers and it's her grizzly colorway, and this is her sock base. I'm not in, can't re quite remember what it's called. And then she gave me a pom-pom too, so I'm gonna make a cute little hat pattern with that. And then I'm gonna start on Sunday, I'm gonna start my Christmas socks. Um, so hopefully I will have some new 
I'll have lots of new things for you to see and hopefully I'll be, um, <laughs> have some more success in my life. <laughs> um, that's it. That's it for knitting. I haven't really done any crafting. I should really finish that cross stitch, I think. Um, but I just haven't. It's been knitting, knitting away, working on my house, organizing things. I was, <laughs> after the after the wrap disaster yesterday, or not disaster, disappointment. It was, it's not a disaster. Um, I, as I said, didn't really feel like podcasting. So my way of putting it off was um, like deep cleaning George's room. <laughs> so that's all all cleaned up. And I actually, I got, she has so much stuff and Christmas is coming and like we have way too much stuff. We have a tiny place and no storage. So um, I've been trying to get her to think about giving some of her toys away to the, to the thrift store. Um, you know, and, and just saying, hey, like, you know, it's getting to be Christmas time and there's some people who don't have lots of money for Christmas presents. So why don't we take some of your nice toys to the, you know, some of the nice ones that you don't play with and to the thrift store. And then, um, or I, I don't know if there's anywhere we can donate used toys really. I know they, there's, there's lots of places that take new toys, but I don't know if, if places take used ones. So I think we'll just give them to the thrift store. Um, but yeah, I got her into the idea of thinking about um, other people enjoying them. So I, I cleaned her room and then I literally like took everything out <laughs> and made little piles. Um, cause I think it was just too overwhelming when it was in her bedroom. So I took it and I just sat her down on the couch and I said, you sit here and like, we'll go through this together. So I kind of put them into little sets. So one of the things it was like, she has these little wooden tiles and then, um, she had these tiles and then she had the like wooden block things and these wooden puzzles and like the, the blocks and the puzzles she did really love, but she's getting a little bit older. So now she plays with kind of different things. So I was like, well, you have these three things and they're kind of similar. Why don't we take, you know, keep one and give two away. And, and that system seemed to work really well with her. So I just kind of grouped things together and said, okay, we can keep three of these and we'll give, two away or, or depending on what it was, like if it was her, um, I don't know, like things that she uses all the time. I just, I didn't even bring it up, you know, cause it's obviously something that she uses all the time. Um, but things that I wanted her to think about. <laughs> um, there's this dollhouse, there's this Playmobil dollhouse that we've had since she was a baby. I found it at the thrift store for $10. It's amazing but she's kind of starting to grow out of it. <laughs> and so every time she, ha she doesn't play with it, every time we kind of talk about get getting rid of some of our stuff, I'm like, so what about this dollhouse? What about this dollhouse? And every time she says, no, no, no. <laughs> so it was still a no this time. I'm like, all right, like, and I don't want to push it either. I'm not going to tell her that she has to get rid of it. If she wants to keep it, she can keep it. One day she will say yes. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we're just kind of working on getting, getting our house a little organized. Um, I accidentally did a bunch of Christmas shopping this morning. I was going to like drop George off and then come right home and do this. And, and I was like, oh, I'm just going to stop into, I don't know where I even went. And then it, all of a sudden it was Christmas shopping day. So, <laughs> um, Saturday, George and, and. Justin, um, they were supposed last weekend, they were supposed to go out on like a go have a day together while I was doing the trunk show. Um, but Justin ended up getting really sick. So they they just stayed home, um, which was okay. It was kind of bad weather anyways. And they were planning on going like going outside. But um, now that's what they're gonna do this Saturday. <laughs> so I'm gonna, while they're gone, I'm gonna put up the tree. I'm not gonna decorate it or anything, but I'll put it up and I'll get, you know, things kind of organized. And then on Sunday, uh, we will decorate everything together. So I think that's gonna be fun. So this area will probably look a little different <laughs> next time where that chair is, that's where the tree goes. So you'll be able to see it, which is nice. Um, 
that's about it. I'm, yeah, I'm just focusing on some small knitting, I think is what I need in my life. I got some, I did get some yarn from Knit Fix. Um, it's right here, I'll show you. <laughs> A big box of Knit Fix yarn. <laughs> Um, now this is for a sweater that I'm planning for. <clears throat> um, so most of this is for a sweater I'm planning to work on in the new year. Um, and I just, it's going to be color work. So I wanted options because I can't see it in person. <laughs> so I have like lots of little colors, not lots of little colors, but lots of different colors because I just couldn't decide on what tone I wanted. <laughs> Very picky, they're all gray and black and white. Um, so most of them I got is stroll fingering. Um, so the, the body, like the base of the sweater is gonna be this, which is um, the stroll tweed. I think it's Wellies or something. It's the color, wait, oh, they don't say it on here. Oh yeah, they do. Well, he's Heather right there, right up front. <laughs> so that's going to be like the main part. And then I just kind of got a bunch of different grays and whites to um, experiment with. Because <laughs> I know like, I really like Stroll Tweed for socks as well. So I know if I have grays and whites and things like that, I will use it. I'll use it for socks for sure. Oh, and there's this one too, which is um, like one of their tonal. It's also Stroll, but it's one of their tonal ones. Um, ooh, and then I got this to try as well because I've never tried this before. And it's the Capretta Superwash, which is um, fingering and it's Superwash Merino Cashmere and Nylon. So it's their MCN base and it feels really nice. Um, it's the Embers Heather colorway. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. Like maybe something like, I really like this one, the oyster tweet. Those three together are super nice. I don't know. I haven't decided. <laughs> and then I guess they were having their, like, their, they do like a big sale twice a year or something. Um, so I got enough that they sent me two of these as well. So this is their Felici. Um, in their present colorway and I yeah so those were cute so I have two of those as well self striping is always fun <laughs> but that's not I just wanted to get it so that I had it so that I could think about my colors for when I start this sweater in January that's not something I'm going to talk about quite yet because there's something else coming up with that um yeah so I guess just a little quick one today uh <laughs> Hopefully next time I won't be so over it. <laughs> Not that I'm over knitting. I'm just, you know, when you finish a project and you're really excited about it and that's a little like, ugh, that happened to me. <laughs> but hopefully I'll, ha I'll have some things that I'm excited about. I still really like my hat. <laughs> Anyways, um, I hope um, happy Thanksgiving to my uh, American friends. I um, hope you had a great weekend with your families, eating good food. Uh, happy Friday to all my Canadian and other peeps. <laughs> and yeah, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next week. <laughs> Bye.